we are going to talk about position sizing and how it applies to our trading. There are three parts to today's session. First, we are going to talk about different types of sizing theories out there. Second, we are going to introduce our very first sizing algo. And third, we are going to derive it. So what we have seen before in our Excel sheet, it was sizing based on account size. Long story short, basically we just aim to lose a certain percentage of our account per trade. So if you want to raise 2% per trade, we bet a certain amount such that when we do have a losing trade, we will only lose 2% of our account. Another type of sizing is volatility sizing. Basically, when the market is more volatile and there are bigger swings and bigger movements, our equity curve will have bigger swings as well. If the market is less volatile, we will expect lower volatility in our equity curve. Imagine if today is a volatile day and we have 100 pip swings every hour and our P&L goes up by 10% and down 10% and up 10% every hour. The next day is less volatile and our P&L goes up by 0.01% and down 0.01% and up 0.01%. And on both days, the trades are triggered by similar market conditions. This will cause a huge disparity in our results over time. Essentially, our trading system will become one that only depends on volatility. Now if our trading system aims only to capture volatility trades, that will be good. Otherwise, it will be not ideal. We do not want the volatility in the market to affect how much we make or lose on each trade. Preferably, we want the amount we win or lose to be independent of volatility. If we want that, we need to account for volatility in our position sizing algorithm. After accounting for it, our algo will be able to bet less when it's more volatile and bet more when it's less volatile, hence cancelling out the volatility effect on our P&L. Martin Gill's of betting systems they require you to bet more when you're losing. anti martingales are betting systems that require you to bet more when you're winning. This martingales is not to be confused with the martingale process in probability theory. We will talk more about martingale betting systems in the later chapters. The Kelly criterion is a formula to determine the optimal size of a series of bets. It was created by J. L. Kelly Jr. in 1956 and is widely used in gambling and investing. It aims to maximize utility to the user. The Kelly criterion is a more advanced concept and we will talk more about it in the later chapters. Introducing our first sizing algorithm. So the amount to bet is the amount of risk you want to take times our account balance divided by our stop loss amount. The amount to bet in lots is the amount to bet in dollars divided by contract size. So the formula will become the risk you want to take times account balance divided by stop loss amount times contract size. Here is an example. Let's say that our account size is $10,000. Our stop loss is 20 pips and we want to risk 1% per trade. Therefore, Based on our formula, the amount we should bet is $50,000. And we know that each standard contract is $100,000. Therefore, the amount we should bet in lots will be 0 0.5 lots. Take a minute to think about how this works and we will look at the derivation in the next part. There are two methods we can use to derive the formula. The first one is backward induction. The second one is to use correlation. Using backward induction, we work backwards to find out how much we should bet in order to reach a certain amount. So let's say using this example, we know that betting one lot is worth $10 per pip. So if our stop loss is 20 pips, we're going to lose $200 per lot. Let's say that we want to risk 1% of our account balance and our account balance is $10,000. Therefore, 1% is $100. If we bet one lot, we are going to lose 
$200. Hence, we should bet 0 0.5 lots. So this 0 0.5 is derived from 100 divided by 20 times 10. Hence, the amount of lots to buy is equal to risk times account balance divided by stop loss times peak value. If we do some creative rearrangement, then we will get the formula lots equals to risk times account balance divided by stop loss in decimal times contract size. The second way is to use correlation. The amount we need to bet is positively correlated to the amount of the risk. The amount is also positively correlated to our account balance and this amount is negatively correlated to stop loss and negatively correlated to contract size. Using correlation, we can derive the formula. Let's look at this example. If A is positively correlated to B, then A could be said to be equals to K times B, where K is a constant. If A is negatively correlated to D, then A could be said to be equals to M divided by D, where M is a constant. Therefore, we know that the amount to buy is positively correlated to two variables and negatively correlated to two variables. So our formula should look something like A equals to B times C in the numerator divided by D times E in the denominator and all of that times N where N is a constant. With that, we will end up with lots equals to risk times account balance divided by stop loss in decimal times contract size. Before we end this session, let us leave you with a quote of the day. Good sizing methodology cannot make a bad robot good, but bad sizing methodology will make a good robot bad.